Good evening and welcome to James Ford Ministries International. We are so very grateful that you took the time to join us to hear what God would say to us today. Today, let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and let us enter his courts with praise. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Let us begin to worship the Lord with this sound. I've been changed. But before we begin, let us go to the throne of God in prayer. Hallelujah. Most merciful and gracious God, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity that we can be found in the land of the living. Lord, we do not take this for granted, but we are grateful, Lord. Lord, when we look around and see how many people are dying day by day, Lord, we are grateful that you have decided to spare our lives yet another day. Father, the very fact that we are here is testament of your grace and your mercy. Lord, we do not deserve to be here, but Lord, you allow it. You are merciful. Father and Almighty God, as we are gathered here today, Father, wherever we are in our homes and our on the road, on in our jobs, wherever we are, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Right now we take time out to just worship and praise your holy name. Father and Almighty God, I pray that your spirit be with us, Lord. Father, that you would come by, Lord, and just fill this temple, Lord. Fill us, hallelujah. Fill us, Lord, we in prayer. Father and Almighty God, we pray for those who are sick. Father, those who are going through problems right now, Father, we pray for them. Father, right now we pray for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. Father, you would come into our hearts and cleanse us afresh, Lord. Father and Almighty God, even as I'm about to minister your word to your people in a short while. Father, right now I pray that you would fill me with your spirit again. Father, anoint me afresh with the anointing that makes preaching easy. Father and Almighty God, I say self-decrease, Lord, and you increase. Lord, tell me what to say to your people. Father, let me speak thus saith the Lord. Father and Almighty God, I pray right now that that at the end of it, Lord, your name get all the glory, your name get all the honor, and you get all the praise. And Lord, I worship and praise your matchless name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Let us worship the Lord with this song I've been changed, and then we'll go into the word of the Lord for today.
forgiven. Forgiven. No more change. My past. My past. It's over. It's over. Say right.
Praise the Lord. I'm never going back to the way it was. I want to read four, four verses of scripture to you. The first is taken from Acts 9, 1 to 2. Then Ephesians 1, 1 to 2. Romans 12, 2. And Philippians 3, 12 to 14. We read in Acts 9, 1 to 2. Meanwhile, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there be who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take as prisoners to Jerusalem. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 1 to 2. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's go over to Romans 12, 2. Do not, be conform, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's, what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And let us go over lastly to Philippians 3.12. To 14. Not that I have already obtained all this, hallelujah, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus told to hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to yet to have taken hold of it but one thing i do forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead i press on toward the goal to win the prize for which god has called me heavenward in christ jesus i have not obtained but i have not arrived at my goal but I press. Today I want to speak to you on the theme and you might be wondering how all of these scriptures tie in together. But I want to speak to you on the theme of transforming Lord. My message today will mainly focus on the first two scriptures, Acts and Ephesians. And although Ephesians 1, 1 to 2 doesn't say very much, when I get into talking in my message, you would understand why I just used that little part. Because when we're talking about God's transformation, that we're talking about how our God can transform lives. Hallelujah. Through salvation, through different experiences in life, in my opinion, there is no better person in the Bible than we can look to than Paul, than Saul, who later became Paul. So while in Acts you see the name Saul and Paul in Ephesians, it speaks to the same person. After the experience in Acts, Saul's name was changed to Paul. The scripture in Acts is also known as the Damascus Road experience and is used by many preachers to show the dynamic change or transformation that happened, at, what happened when we are saved, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Today's message is about transformation. A transformation is a thorough or dynamic change. 
And when we think about salvation, it is truly dynamic. Our eternal destiny is changed. That is a dynamic change where we will spend eternity is changed. We receive the, the Holy Ghost who is God dwelling within us. Dynamic. And they're allowing us to freely communicate with Christ. So for a couple of minutes, I want to look at the Damascus Road experience. So the events that happened on the road to Damascus relate not only to the Apostle Paul, but actually it relates to all of us. Although it was only his dramatic conversion that occurred there that is noted, it speaks to all of us and provides a clear picture of the conversion of all people. While some have extraordinarily dramatic conversions, known as a Damascus Road experience, the convergence of all believers follows a similar pattern of Paul's experience on the road to Damascus. These were described in Paul's own words in Acts 9, 1 to 9, Acts 22, 6 to 11, and Acts 26, 9 to 20. But when we put all of these three accounts together, we see the details coming together of an amazing experience, a life-changing experience. So Paul, who went by the name of Saul at that time, was on his way to Damascus with a letter from the high priest of the temple in Jerusalem, giving him authority to arrest any who belonged to the way, meaning anyone who followed Christ, anyone who were disciples of Christ. Hallelujah. So right now, if you call yourself a Christian, that is who Saul was going to persecute. Uh, in Acts 2, 9, 26, 9, he was opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, and it says that in raging fury, he breathed threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. So here was a man who truly hated Christ and all who were associated with him. Hallelujah, you need to stick with me on this. And it says, suddenly, a bright light shone on Saul, causing his entire party to fall on the ground. Huh. Hmm. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. And it says that the Lord spoke to Saul, saying, why are you persecuting me? Huh. Isn't this like our transformation? Where the spirit of the Lord convicts us? Saul recognized that there was a deity of some sort because he called him Lord and asked who he was. He recognized, although not saying that he was Jesus Christ, he recognized that it was something or someone that was higher than him. So when Jesus identified himself as the very one Saul was persecuting, one can only imagine the terror that filled Saul's heart. Saul was speechless, no doubt, thinking to himself that I'm a dead man. Hallelujah. But I'm here to remind you that Saul was who Jesus came to die for. Christ did not come to die 
for a perfect world. Christ did not come to die for a sinless world. Christ did not come to die for the disciples. Those that were following him, he came and died that those who did not know him might be saved. Those that were that were in sin, that were living in sin and darkness, that is who he came to save. Because those belonging to the way, those who followed Christ, needed no salvation. But he came to die for people like Saul. Like us. The Acts 2 to 22 version of the story indicates that Saul's response was to ask what Jesus wanted him to do. And the story and the Acts and Acts 22 retelling of the story have Saul saying, have Saul saying, Jesus told him to rise and go to the masters where he would be told what to do. In Acts 26, which is no, which is longer and more detailed, Saul described Jesus' commission of him as his messenger to the Gentiles, which must have amazed Saul, the ultimate Gentile-hating Pharisee, to turn many from darkness to the light, and from the power of Satan to God. His message of forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith must have also astonished Saul because the Jews were convinced they alone had the place of honor in God's eye. And I want to back up. When we saw that the light shone, he fell to the ground and could not see because he had to be carried into Damascus. He could not see. Hallelujah. That is what happens to us when the Holy Spirit convicts us and the light of God is shone abroad in our hearts. We realize that we have been Blind to the truth, the reality of Jesus Christ as Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was there that he truly recognized that he was blind. He was walking alone, seeing, but spiritually blind. There the spiritual caught up with the natural. So there he recognized that he was blind. So he goes in. So he meets, he meets with Ananias who lays hands on him. He received the Holy Spirit. He met he met, let me go back up. There's no discrepancy or contradiction among these three accounts. Even though Saul received his commission from Jesus on the road, he still had to go into Damascus to be told what to do. Meet with Ananias, who laid hands on him, receive the Holy Spirit, be baptized, and be received by the disciples there. At Damascus, he also went for three days without eating or drinking and then received his sight, which had been taken from him on the road. The phrase Damascus Road Experience is used to describe a conversion which is dramatic and startling. Many people receive Christ in a life-changing, inst instantaneous experience. Although many others describe their conversion as one as more 
of a gradual understanding of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But both types of experiences have several things in common. First, salvation is of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. Uh, you must come through the door, uh, which is Jesus Christ. There's no way, no um, entrance. We must all come through the Lord Jesus Christ. By his will and according to his plan and purpose. As he does one way or another to each of us. Jesus made it clear to Saul that he had gone his own way for long enough. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking to someone out there. Hallelujah. Who may not know Jesus Christ the Savior. God is saying you have gone your own way long enough. Long enough you have strayed. Uh, long enough you have strayed. Hallelujah. So now Saul was to become an instrument in the hands of the master to do his will as he had foreordained it. Second, the response of both Saul and all those who are redeemed by Christ is the same. What do you want me to do? Like Saul, we do not bargain, negotiate, question, or come halfway. The response of the redeemed is obedience. Hallelujah. And I need to emphasize that. Hallelujah. The response of the redeemed is obedience. God still calls for obedience. Hallelujah. So many years ago, the call, the response of the redeemed is still obedience. When God truly touches our hearts, our only response can be, Lord, may your will be done and may you use me to do it. Such was the experience of Saul under the Damascus road. Hallelujah. Lord, what you want me to do? That should be our response. Hallelujah. 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 Obedience is still in order. The response of the redeemed is obedience. Hallelujah. We got too many obey Christians that believe they know how to do it. Almighty oh, God. They believe they know best. Ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus. They believe they have arrived and they know what is to be done. Hallelujah. And sometimes they try to tell Christ. But the response is to be obedient. Hallelujah. We want to do our own thing. But we got to fall down on our knees and ask God, what do you want me to do? Lord, may your will be done. Saul's dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus was the beginning of an incredible journey. And while not all conversions are as startling as Saul's, each of us is commissioned by Jesus to live in obedience to him. Love one another in his name. Know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And to tell the world of the wonderful riches in Christ. And in Romans, we hear that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are to be renewed by the transforming of our mind. This is the change of our thinking, the way we look at things. The way we need to think must change because if we change our thinking, our actions will change as well. We must adopt the mind of Christ. We are to put off all things so the way we use 
the way we think must be different. So when we look at it, Saul was going to Damascus persecuting anyone that was of the way, anyone that was a disciple of Christ. By the events that happened on the road to Damascus, his mind was tremendously changed. He hated Christ going into Damascus. Hallelujah. By the end, he was asking God, what do you want me to do? He became a disciple of Christ, our transforming Lord. Our transforming Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He went hidden Christians and he came out being a part of the body of Christ. And in that, Saul was going to Damascus with letters of persecution. Hallelujah. But in epistles, for example, Ephesians, he is writing letters of encouragement. Hallelujah. From letters of persecution to letters of encouragement. To the churches and to young pastors. A man who was against the church ended up being one of the apostles, one of the leaders, one of the heads in the early church. Let us never be too quick to give up on people because we never know who God will use. Saul went into Damascus, never expecting to be used of God, hallelujah, to head his early church, to be used in his early church, hallelujah. But we never know who God will use. So let us never be too quick to give up. God has given us the commission to go, hallelujah, into all the world. Hallelujah. We're not supposed to sit down behind our pulpits. We're not supposed to stand up behind our pulpits and just talk to the congregation. But we got to go and speak to the souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to stop talking to the Pauls and go talking to the souls. Ah, oh, bless the name of the Lord. You gotta stop talking to the Pauls and go talking to the Psalms. But they're the one that need salvation. And before I close, I wanna touch on our last topic, our last scripture. We need to understand that our transformation will not make us perfect. Our perfection will take place on the last day because as long as we are on earth, we are a work in progress paul was an apostle and even he had to admit that he had not arrived but he's striving towards heaven the songwriter says look where he brought me from this shows transformation and progress our final transformation will be when christ puts in his second appearance but as long as we remain here on earth we are to keep striving towards that final transformation. For our God, he is a transforming Lord. God bless you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus, look where you brought me from. Jesus, look where you brought me from. Hallelujah. A lot of us, hallelujah, are now Pauls. And we don't like to look back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to see where God has brought us from. And when I say look back, I don't mean to go look back in order to go back to where we came from, but to look to see where God has brought us from. Our testimony should be of where God has brought us from, that some other might believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Most merciful God, we thank you, Lord, that you are still in the saving business. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're still in the saving business. Hallelujah, Lord, it didn't stop with Paul. Hallelujah, but Lord, you're still in the saving business. Lord, you're still transforming lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, if there is someone out there who needs your transformation, someone who will say, I've heard the word. Hallelujah. And the word has given light. Hallelujah to my sin. 
and your Holy Spirit has come and convict me. Hallelujah. And now, right now, Father, I pray that you will forgive them of their sins right now. Welcome them into your sonship right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, we declare right now that there are children, that they are your children, that they are children of the King. Father and Almighty God, we pray right now that you they would avail themselves. Father, that they would say, Lord, what is your will? Lord, what would you want me to do? Father, hallelujah, even right now as we pray, Remember the redeemed, Lord. Sometimes we stray away from that obedience, but Lord, give us an obedient spirit. Father, sometimes we believe that we know what we are to do. Hallelujah. And Lord, we know that we have arrived. Father, but the response of the redeemed is still obedience. Lord, give us an obedient spirit. Give us an obedient heart that we be open to your will and to your way. Father and almighty God, we pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your transformation. Father, when we look back and see where you have brought us from, we can say, Lord, you brought us a mighty long way. And Lord, we appreciate you today. Lord, we appreciate you today. And Father, help us to keep striving towards that final transformation, that final perfection. And Lord, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Saints, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, I gave you the notice by way of announcement. Hallelujah. A revival service starts the 16th. The 16th of August at 3 p.m. Hallelujah. And right now, we I announce to you that we will have a live worship leader that sunday so join with us and see who that will be a live worship leader the sunday and uh, even if you are interested hallelujah in leading worship here hallelujah and the lord has blessed you with the gift of singing you can reach out to us, message me at 1246-265-4273. That is 1246, that's the area code, 265-4273. Message me, call me, reach out on our website, jfmi.simplesite.com or our Facebook page at JFMI Barbados. Reach out to us anyway, and we will um, get that organized because we have a whole week, six days. Hallelujah. Our revival is under the theme, what is the Spirit saying to the church? Hallelujah. We are excited to see what God will say to us. I don't know yet what God will say to us, but I'm in expectation of what God will say for us. So be in prayer for our revival service. Hallelujah. Because I'm sure we want to see a revival in our land. Hallelujah. But we got to let it begin with us. Praise the Lord. So that's the week of the 16th, the 16th to the 21st. Our evening services during the week begin at 5 p.m. So come out and then remember our day of prayer, the Wednesday, the 19th, I believe. Wednesday the 19th at 5 p.m. would be our day of prayer. All services will be streamed live. And we have our, our, we have our poster, our flyer out. Our poster for our revival is on our Facebook page, JFMI Barbados. You can get it from there. Share it, hallelujah, with everyone that they can be present here in our revival service to hear what God will say to us. Hallelujah. And I believe I will send it to some of you. So share it with others and let us come in expectation Hallelujah. Prayerful expectation. 
of what God would say to us. Praise the Lord. So that's all my announcements. We will see you on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To hear the word of the Lord again. So right now, with our hearts and minds cleared, we say, may the God of peace, <clears throat> who raised Christ from the dead, strengthen your inner being for every good work. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us go out remembering that our Lord is a transforming Lord. Praise the Lord.